We're now going to focus on the importance of interbank collaboration in the payment space and the revolution that's taking place in that sector. To look at the reasons for increased interest in payments as part of the broader banking mix and to give his predictions on the future of payments. We're joined by John Hunter, Global Head of Clearing at JP Morgan. John, welcome to Cybos TV. Thank you, thank you for having me. I really am happy to be here. Excellent, excellent. Now listen, people have described the payments landscape as the next battleground in business. What is it about payments that's actually captured imagination in the last few years to give rise to that remark? Sure, well, you know, payments has always big, been big business for banks, right? It's been core to who banks are. And in the last few years, there's been a lot of competition from, from lots of different areas that have driven differentiation in the payment space. And we as banks, you know, we have a very unique position here. And we want to make sure that we continue to be relevant and we continue to be the one that clients look for when they need to send money overseas. One of the big themes this year at Cybos is thriving in a hyper-connected world. So what does that mean for the payment space? Well, you know, hyper-connected is really that. It's hyper-connected. You think about it, uh, I think that the stat I read was uh, by 2030, there'll be like 130 billion internet-connected devices. So we're used to be living in a world where everything is connected and we immediately get information on everything that we want. You know, if you go and order a, a package from Amazon, right, you immediately know what time it's going to be delivered to your house down to like the hour now, mm. right? And you can count on it being there. But yet in the payment space, we're still a little bit behind, right? If you need to know a, a status of a confirmation, it could take a couple of days to get a response. Or if you need to know information regarding uh, uh, some sanction screening information around a client, you know, it could take you a, a week to get data to be able to resolve that. So in a hyper-connected space, we have to be able to leverage the new technology to take advantage of, of the benefits that can be derived from it and really improve that client payment experience. I mean, how far behind are you? You know, we're not, I wouldn't say we're behind. I would say that we're really good at doing payments in the way that we do them, but we can get better and we can be more client centric, we can be more value, we can be more valuable to our customers and process payments and be more transparent in the way that they, that they, uh, uh, that they need payments to, to be. And so in today's world, right, you send a payment and you kind of say, good luck, hope it gets there, <laughs> right? But with Swift GPI and with some of these new uh, innovations that are coming forward, we now have the ability to really provide much more transparency, have clients really understand the status of flows and really feel kind of this hyper-connectedness that we want to in the, in the payment space. Let's stay with that because what do you see as the most exciting developments on the payments horizon? Because clearly things are happening. Oh, absolutely, there's a ton. So one of the things that I see that I think is, provides a lot of value and opportunity for us is this concept of kind of payment rail convergence. So today, you know, a client sends a wire, a client sends an ACH, they might send a real-time payment, they might write a check, they might use a credit card. Like, and each one of those is a very separate channel with a very separate infrastructure and very challenging. In the future, those rails are going to become much more closer together. Mm. And so we're going to be able to see, you know, a client send a payment and then the banks will be able to understand based on how a client wants a payment configured, what's the best rail to get it there? What's the cheapest way? What's the most efficient way to meet the customer need but also deliver the service that they want in a very effective and efficient way? FinTech, banks, collaboration has been a huge point at this year's Cyber. So how important would you say interbank collaboration is when it comes to innovation in the payment space? And, and has there been a mentality shift that's driving this, do you think? You know, absolutely. It's super important. Because when you think about banks, no bank can do it on their own. This is a network, right? And the network of banks all have to work together to provide the experience that, that the clients want and demand, right? So as banks get together and can figure out where they can compete, but where they can collaborate and figure out what those things are. I mean, there are some things that are differentiating, but 99% of what we do is not necessarily differentiating for a bank. Right, it's similar to what all the other banks do. Can we get better at doing it together and have a more utility focus and do things in a different way that can then drive a lot of value uh, for our customers? If you think about payments and collaboration, banks uh, are, 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 are a distributed network. 
most of our comp competitors are a closed network, so they own both sides, right? So they can tell you exactly when the money is going to get there, exactly how many dollars are going to arrive. But in our bank network today, we can't. But with the advent of Swift GPI, with things like blockchain and the new technologies that are evolving, if we work together, we can absolutely uh, improve that interconnectedness and act much more like a closed network to much better affect the, the, the client expectations. Mm. Because the, the aspiration is to have a frictionless payment system, but what are the barriers that are standing in the way of that so far? You know, most of the barrier in, in this friction is, is related to data and information. So if you think about, about, uh, about payments, like if a payment goes straight through, it's fantastic. And we have like 95, 98% of the payments in the world go straight through and have no issue. But when a payment has an exception and it stops for some reason, then all of a sudden it goes completely manual. And those things, some of those, those, uh, those manual exceptions can take you know, two weeks to resolve. And here you have someone who's waiting for a payment for some very important thing that they've done and that payment got stopped because we couldn't tell you know, whether it was the good John Hunter or the mm, bad John Hunter. Exactly. Right? So when you think about friction, most of it is about our ability to share information faster across banks that allows us to then resolve some of these items. You know, Swift GPI it, it does a great job of sharing. We also believe that, uh, that some of the blockchain initiatives can work you know, in, in, uh, in, in company with Swift to make correspondent banking in the SWIFT network even work more effectively. So how do we eliminate some of these barriers, reduce some of this friction, and who's best place to do so? You know, it's got to be the banks. We have to work together, and we have to figure out, you know, what is competitive, and again, what is not. And what can be utility, and what can be shared, we have to share. We have to be much faster. No one banks with me because I'm really super good at connecting to the Fed. Like everyone connects to the Fed, right? So can we connect to the Fed in a, in a cheaper, more frictionless way and share that across the world and make it very efficient, right? And if we're efficient, then we can spend investment dollars on things that really are different and really do move the space and really do get our clients that experience that they want. Mm. I mean, obviously the clients are helping to drive the changes in payments this year, but what other factors are, are really facilitating that? Yeah, a, a lot of it is going to be communication. And you asked the question a little earlier around, has there been a mindset change? And I would say absolutely yes, the banks have changed their opinions. And we are now working closely with many of what people would normally consider our competitors to deliver value in the network to customers. And that's going to have to continue for this to work. Well, John Hunter, it's been a pleasure speaking to you. I hope you enjoy the remainder of your Cybos 2019. John Hunter, Global Head of Clearing at JP Morgan. Thanks for joining us on Cybos TV. Thank Thanks so much. Yes. Appreciate it. Brilliant. Thank you.